We've covered the method of joints for solving truss problems. We will now proceed to our second method, which is the method of sections. The method of sections is good if you don't want to work all the way through the truss problem solving each joint. If there are only a few members that you are concerned about finding the forces in, the method of sections is for you. All right, so let's get started with the example. So here we have a truss, and this truss we're given, uh, it has a fixed pin joint here and a roller joint here at D, and we're given the dimensions. These are spaced at four meters apart, and its height here is three meters, and our forces, we have 400 newtons at the top and 1200 newtons at the bottom. And what we're looking to find here are the forces in FGE, so this one here, uh, FGC, this one here, and FBC, which is here. All right, so we'll use the method of sections and similarly to the method of joints, usually the first step, usually the good first step is to always solve for the support reactions. So solve for the supports here. So let's take the supports off and let's add the forces there, the respective forces. So we'll take the supports off, and now we've added the forces. The fixed pin joint gets a vertical and horizontal force, and the roller just has a vertical force here. Okay, so let's start our analysis. All right, so now we wanna solve for these support reactions. Okay, so let's start with our equilibrium equations. We'll take the sum of the forces in the x direction and set those equal to zero. Okay, so in the x direction we have ax. Let's make sure we have that written down here. So we'll use x, y, just the normal coordinate system there. In the x direction we have 400 newtons up here. And then we have ax right here. And that looks like they're all we have here and set those equals to zero. It looks like we have AX is equal to 400, negative 400 Newtons, which just means that the way we've drawn this, AX is actually pointed in the other direction. I'm not gonna flip arrows or anything like that. We'll just keep it at negative 400 there. Now we'll, um, what do we wanna do? Let's, Instead of taking the sum of the forces in the y direction first, let's do the sum of the moments. And let's do the sum of the moments about A and set those equal to zero. Okay, so taking the sum of the moments about A, this point, we have our 400 Newtons. And let's label our positive, direct, uh, positive sign convention as counterclockwise. So 400 Newtons is going to want to create a clockwise moment around A, which will be negative. So we have negative 400. And the distance, the perpendicular distance is three meters there. So that's three meters. And then we have the 1200 Newton force, 1200. Um, and that's going to create a clockwise moment as well. 1200, so that's going to be negative. And that is acting eight meters away. And lastly, we have dy, which is going to create a counterclockwise moment, so that will be positive, go around this way. And the distance that is away is 12 meters. So what we find out here, what is dy? Let's calculate that quick. We'll set that equal to zero. And we have negative 400 times three, minus 200, 1200 times eight. Looks like when we solve that, we have dy. dy comes out to be positive 900 Newtons. Okay, and the last equation we will just take the sum of the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero. And we have our AY pointed upward. We have DY pointed upward. And then we have this 1200 Newton force downward and set that equal to zero. We know DY is 900. 
which then makes Ay come out to be 300 newtons. Is that correct? Yes, 300 newtons. All right, so we now have our support reactions. And the next step, once we have the support reactions, is breaking this truss here. So this is why it's called the method of sections. We're gonna break this into sections. And when we break this, we expose the internal forces of the truss. And that's really what we're trying to do. So we're gonna break this and expose the internal forces. The internal forces that we wanna find are the forces in GE, the forces in GC, and the forces in BC. So we're gonna break this thing right down the middle here. Okay, we're gonna break it. So we break it and then we can either analyze the left hand side or we can analyze the right hand side. I'm going to choose to analyze the left hand side, but it doesn't matter. You come up with the same answer. So after we break it, I have now, we'll now move over here and we now have the left hand side here. Okay. So we broke it and that exposes all these internal forces. And if you draw all the arrows going away from the members, that means you've assumed all of them are in tension. So if we get a negative number, we will know that they're in compression. Okay, so we're analyzing this section and we, we have already figured out AX is uh, negative 400 Newtons. So uh, let's put negative 400 there. And AY we found out was 300 Newtons. So AY is 300 Newtons. Okay. So now what we need to do is use our equilibrium equations here. All right. So we can choose to uh, sum the forces in the X direction or sum the forces in the Y direction. You might wanna choose these carefully because choosing them carefully will actually eliminate a lot of the variables and make this easy to solve. For example, in terms of forces in the y direction, I only have AY here and FGC. FBC and FGE um, all, all are in the horizontal direction. So let's sum the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero to make this easy. All right, so AY we have is 300 Newtons positive. So that's AY. And then we have a component of FGC, and that should be in the negative direction. So FGC and a component of that. Well, what's this angle up here? Well, what we do know is this is a three, four, five triangle. So the horizontal distance of this member from here to here is four, the height is three, and then the, that makes the hypotenuse five. So this is a three, four, five triangle. So in the Y direction, we have three, and then divided by the hypotenuse is five. So that's the component of FGC here. And that's it. We set this equal to zero, and we get FGC is equal to 500 Newtons. And that's positive, it comes out to be positive, which means that's intention. All right, so we have one solution already. Okay, now we really get to choose uh, what we wanna do after this. Okay. I would suggest taking the moments. And we can take the moments about any point on this diagram. I think a good one will be C. And why would I choose C to take moments about? Because FGC is pointed directly at C, FBC is pointed directly at C, AX is pointed directly at C, so none of those forces are going to create a moment about C. So that eliminates a lot of variables from our equation, which makes it easier to solve. So let's do it. Okay, so we have AY, 
this moment around C. So we're taking the moment out around C, even though it's not included in our section here, we can still take the moment about C. So we have 300 and the distance away that's acting from C is eight. And is that positive or negative? Well, it's going to create a clockwise moment. So that's negative by our sign convention that we chose here. All right, and then we have FGE. So FGE uh, will create a clockwise moment as well. So that will be a negative sign. And the dis perpendicular distance that's acting away is three. And all, we don't have any other forces that create moments around C. And we'll set that equal to zero. We have FGE comes out to be 800 newtons or negative 800 newtons. Which means because we drew this in tension, that is 800 newtons in compression. So that is our answer for FGE. Okay, and the last one, let's see, what would be an easy way to do this? Well, we could take the moments. It might just be easiest to uh, take the moments around G. So G is this point up here. And by taking the moments around G, FGE and FGC both go through G here. So they're not gonna create a moment around G. So then we're just left with the rest of the forces here. Okay, so let's do that. Moments around G. So some of the moments around G and set those equal to zero. Counterclockwise is positive. All right, so let's start with AY. AY is 300 and it's going to create a clockwise moment, which is going to be negative. So 300 newtons clockwise. And the distance that it's acting away is four from G, right? The perpendicular distance here for AY. And AX is going to create a moment around G and that's going to be counterclockwise. So that will be positive. So we have AX, which is negative 400. And we, the moment arm there is three meters. And okay, so A is taken care of. Um, we have FBC, which is going to create a counterclockwise moment around G. So we have plus FBC, 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 uh, and the distance is three meters there. And then we have, is that it? Yeah, these, both of these will not create a moment around G because they're pointed directly away from it. So that looks like all we have. So let's set that equal to zero and solve this. And it comes out FBC is a positive 800 Newtons. So that's 800 Newtons in tension. So that is the method of sections, and it comes out that this is much easier when you're only trying to solve for several of the members. If you were to do this problem by using the method of joints, you would have to sequentially go from pen to pen to pen to pen, solving all those equations until you got to uh, the ones that you wanted.